Welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining our Zoom meeting tonight. My name is Jenny Klein and I'm the president of the New York Flute Club and we are so grateful to be joined today by Jody Blanco, who is currently living in Madrid. So um, we thought we'd just start off by, I, I might ask her a few questions and as we talk, if you think of something that you'd like to know about, please, um, uh, I guess, enter it in the chat. That might be the easiest way and then I'll, I'll relay the questions to Jordi. So, um, Jordi and I were speaking just a moment before um, we got started, and um, I just want to hear a little bit about um, uh, how, how you first came to the flute and a little bit about your early music education. So, maybe you know about uh, like El Sistema in Venezuela? Yes. You heard? Yeah. So, um, uh, one day I was just watching the TV and then there was a flute player in the TV. And she was playing like, like a typical music from Venezuela um, with the orchestra. And that day, like, I remembered about the flute, but maybe one year later, my mother came to our house and she was always putting my sister and me in like karate and something that, you know, like cool. And um, then she said one day, maybe you should go to, to El Sistema and, and try, like try the exam, entrance exam. And with my sister, we, we were just playing. I was like eight years old, she was 10. And she wanted to play the trombone, but after she ended up playing like viola. Mm -hmm. And I was always wanted to play the flute. I don't know, since I saw that video, I was like, maybe I tried to, to play the flute. And it was love at first sight. Like the day I had my flute, like it was incredible. So it was because of El Sistema and, uh, and then my mom. Wow. Well, you know, I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with the term El Sistema. Um, I think probably more than a decade ago, we started seeing videos on YouTube of um, orchestra, an orchestra from El Sistema. And I think Gustavo Dudamel was um, conducting. And, uh, uh, you know, just to see these very young musicians playing at a very advanced level, it was pretty exciting. And I think other countries including in the U.S., I think people have started trying to build a similar program to El Sistema. Can you tell me a little bit about what it was like, um, what what the structure of, of it was like? How often did you have lessons and were you in ensembles right away and all of that? So, oh. uh, I started uh, like in 2001 and uh, it was like uh, you the you have like initiation it was for six months and they learn uh, they try to teach you how to read the music and the notes and everything like the basic so mm -hmm. you can go and play something mm -hmm. and maybe some choral you can uh, try to sing and 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 that was like the first uh six, six months but it was uh, five days a week from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Wow. Uh, yeah, it was a lot. Yeah. And then uh, when I started playing the flute, I had uh, these four hours uh, for five days, five days. And then I also had uh, flute classes, like individual. And that was maybe not all the week, like maybe once or twice a month. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you, you basically, you, you are like trying to play the flute by yourself and then you, you have your teacher that teach you alone and then you have also ensembles. Yeah, that's true. You don't start playing with the orchestra right right away. It's mm -hmm. like uh, first you start with only winds and then the the others and the the, the, the strings, 
uh, after like maybe a year you play with the whole orchestra but you only play like arrangements like really easy arrangements uh -huh. and um, basically I ha I was with my sister so we were like uh, oh so it's really fun we are doing this all the all, the, all days like five days and there then you know it started to get like uh, maybe six days a week that then seven days a week we, we were then sunday and saturday and sometimes uh we were there like uh when we when we had uh, holidays we were there there like whole from nine till 6 p.m and maybe sometimes we stayed there until 10. wow yeah so it's a lot of work and I, 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 I know that in, in other countries it's a bit difficult uh, to apply this system, but uh, for us uh, it was really cool. And you know, I was from a, a, like a really dangerous, dangerous uh, place. You know, like uh, this. Uh, I don't know how to say in English favelas. <laughs> um. It's like a, a, a really bad um, neighborhood. Uh -huh. it was oh, okay. Really yeah. bad. Vicino. Un vicino. Yeah. yeah. Vicino. So uh, my sister and, and me, we were like outside this world. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks to the uh, El Sistema. It's really, for us, it, it was really this kind of story. You know, for some kids, they're from really good families, so it's not uh, exactly that. But for us, it was like uh, the image that they give in the international level, it was the same for us. Like uh, uh -huh. really uh, poor kids going to learn music and then little by little, <laughs> maybe we, we became musicians, maybe not. It was just like a learning about life. Actually. Yeah. I'm just seeing little requests coming in. People are asking if you can turn up your volume. I don't know if we have any more volume to give here. Is your is your volume on your computer turned all the way up? I, I think we tried this. We looked at your audio settings and if the volume's turned all the way up, people will just have to listen closely. Okay, I will try to get closer to my computer. So it sounds like it was a pretty all-consuming thing. Like you didn't have time to do other things like sports or ballet or anything like that. It was music, music all the time when you weren't in school. Is that right? But it doesn't sound like you, oh, like you, you, you loved no. it. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I actually, how many years? Uh, how, you were eight when you started, did you say? And yeah. how long yeah. did you do it? How long were you in this El Sistema? Ten years. Ten years. Okay. Wow. Uh, I was uh, like, I, I stayed there ten years and I have the same friends uh -huh. from the beginning, you know? That. So it's like a whole story for your whole life. And mm -hmm. It's really cool. And then from there, did a lot of the <clears throat> students who went through El Sistema, did they go on to study music at the college level and get degrees in music? Some. Are almost all of them are here in Europe, like in oh. other countries, not in Spain, Germany, uh -huh. France, Italy. Uh -huh. Yeah. So where did you where did you do your undergraduate degree? Your where did you go to college first? Oh, so in Venezuela you don't have this figure of college. Uh -huh. So you only do school <clears throat> until until seventeen or sixteen, mm -hmm. and you end. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And then you go to university. Okay. So I ended my school at at seventeen. And then I went to France. So you you to you, do my bachelor's. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> and uh, I I saw some of your teachers. Who did you study with in France? France, I was with uh, Philippe Bernard, uh, mm -hmm. Julien Boudimont, who was the solo flute from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And then there was also the uh, solo flute from the Opera of Paris, uh, of Paris, and uh, Claude Lefebvre. Yeah, mm -hmm. I had th three teachers. Mm -hmm. And yeah. from there, um, is that when you came to Spain? After that, no, 
then I went to Switzerland <clears throat> to huh? do my master's. And was that with Jacques Zun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remembered seeing his name on your resume. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, then I, I went to, to Madrid. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and how long have you been in Madrid now? Four years? Four? Yeah, four. So, um, you know, we've, we've, you know, a lot of us first became aware of you um, in the Tchaikovsky International oh. Competition. But I know you were actually doing some competitions before then. Um, what was your first competition? Where was it and what was it like? And how old were you when you entered? Uh, that was really fun. Actually, my, like my first international competition was when I was uh, 14 years old in mm -hmm. 2008. So it was a Jean-Pierre Rampal flute mm -hmm. competition. It was in mm -hmm. Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like a big. Because I didn't know anything about any competition. Mm -hmm. And when I went there, there were like Japan, uh, Germany, any every country there. And uh -huh. uh, it was really fun to learn how other countries play the flute and how they prepare. They prepare. And uh, I I really appreciate that I got the chance to go there, even if I didn't pass the first round. <laughs> so was that your first time traveling out of Venezuela? And uh, do you remember what you played for that competition? Oh, of course. I played the D, uh, C major uh, Bach sonata. Uh -huh. And I play also Carter Scriven Vento. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the starter. And I play also some Rodrigo studies. Uh, I don't remember the number of, of the um, mm -hmm. study. And your teacher in Venezuela helped you prepare for that competition? Uh, he just like, I, the thing that I have, that I have to say from my teacher in Venezuela, uh, it was that he teach me how to be organized with my scores, with my studies. So I I had uh, since I studied with him, I have these uh, plannings to to like technicals and and how to organize my studies since I was like maybe eleven years old. Wow! So even in summer, I did this little um, planning study. And I put some Tafanelli <clears throat> Moise and, and and I had like a, each day a thing to practice. So sort of uh, like a practice chart, like how long you're going to spend uh, on each thing. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. All right. Wow. It was really helpful. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and what did you learn from that first competition? You said you, you know, you were exposed to all these flutists from all these other countries and just sort of seeing how they played and what they, how they prepared. What were the, the things that you remember, you know, being surprised about the most in that competition? You no, know, when I went to that competition, I was I was thinking that that maybe people will be me or maybe they try to damage me. You know, like all competitions, studies, and uh, you think that people are gonna be like. Uh, really not nice to you but actually i met i met uh, i made uh, friends there See, but even though i didn't speak english and or french or any language only spanish uh flutes uh, flutes uh, or flute players around the world are really nice or musicians mm -hmm. just musicians and uh, we 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 are always care to try to communicate but it's not this way actually we are going through the same things and when i went to that competition i was like oh he did maybe the same mistake as me but mm -hmm. he's he's doing so well you know so i learned how to like be nice to yourself and just try to enjoy the moment actually mm -hmm. yeah yeah and um do you find that you're 
you you have met some of the same people when you go to different competitions you see some of the same people that maybe you first met when you went to the Jean-Pierre Rampal competition uh-huh yeah maybe uh, that one uh, I met people from maybe the, the first competitions that I did after that in Europe uh -huh. but maybe in Kobe or, or Tchaikovsky not so many uh-huh because uh -huh. they were older already. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, how did you get to the point of being able to compete in some of the highest level competitions? Can you talk about your preparation and how you feel, you know, what has contributed to your success? I think that my biggest preparation to competitions are like, it's like, mm hearing recordings just music like i always uh, pick my my pieces and then i start listen listening maybe to uh, violin concertos from the same composer or or I, and i do like a playlist and everywhere i go i'm listening to this music so i can understand the style i can try to get some ideas too so maybe if I have to play Rondo by Mozart, I will listen to the violin version or another Rondo from Mozart. Mm -hmm. And actually it's really um, helpful and also healthy because if I keep listening to the same thing for about six months, it's not possible. You will get bored. So right. like, yeah, no, it's not possible. So I really recommend to, to listen to, to to listen to the whole catalog of the composer not just this piece mm -hmm. of the flute because uh, it's not maybe if you listen to Mozart opera then you, you I am playing now Figaro notches of Figaro mm -hmm. and I mean I am hearing like a G major con mm -hmm. uh, flute concerto in the opera and mm -hmm. I say this was this this idea came from here and 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 we don't know actually if if we don't get to hear everything about this composer yeah mm -hmm. so that's number one uh, mm -hmm. like for me in, in preparing competitions and then i start like playing and playing and playing and and recording myself and and being very critical and saying this will not work uh, with the in, in a competition because in, in competitions you have to be really careful and think about the audience and think about the jury not not you cannot do like whatever you want to do mm -hmm. you have to be yourself but also uh, know that you will play to a jury and to a public to an audience and they will sometimes i get to see like the audience and they have the program with every candidate's picture and then we go, oh no, this is not good. Oh, this is good. And they will put like an X in your face or... <laughs> so it's really, um, some countries are, are really used to this kind of competitions, <clears throat> um, ambience, I don't know how to say. But uh, yeah, you have to think about that. You, have, you will play to an audience and you have to show, show yourself like your best self, but also you have to be, Prepared, really prepared. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, do you find that juries in different competitions are looking for different things? And do you ever adjust your playing to what you think the jury might be looking for? No, not really. Actually, I I have been doing competitions since I was fourteen years old, and. Uh, I, I have never adapted to one person or, or one kind of jury. <coughs> you will get like many different juries. Maybe you will get one one same guy and then other people around him. And uh, you cannot change your, your way of playing each time. It's so difficult. It's like a, put, putting on a mask every time you have to play. And they will notice, they will notice that you are not playing as you want to play. So I only try to think 
about maybe for me the audience the people that are hearing you that are not flute players or maybe they are uh, are more imp are more important in a competition because uh, that's like uh, the best of opinion you can have the jury sometimes they can be biased or not or they are just flute players and when you know the instrument um, it's really difficult to get like out some ideas maybe you have this kind of idea to play Mozart but maybe, maybe it's not right or maybe it is so I just play for the people for the audience and mm -hmm. and try to put myself in in that moment and and that's it yeah mm -hmm. um and how do you handle do you do you ever get performance anxiety do you get nervous and if so how do you have ways of dealing with it actually that's really funny because uh, I'm always very nervous. I'm always very stressed, but I don't show it in myself, in my face. No, I'm I've like seen this, your videos. Like, and and... Yeah, but I'm I'm like dying inside. Like my 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 whole stomach is like, but I'm like really in my face. Don't, don't it doesn't show. But um, actually, at the beginning. Uh, my teacher uh, told me how to meditate so now i don't do it anymore and i have to start doing it again but at the beginning i was always when i entered the hall to play a, a round or, or maybe a concert or whatever i always um, felt my feet like walking slowly and like try to get a connection from the whole and and it was really relaxing i don't know how to ex express uh, it's really like because sometimes we enter the hall we're just looking at the people that are there or maybe if there is a jury you will see the jury and oh he has a paper of or or maybe not so if you think just about your your feet and your walk and you concentrate about this, you don't get to see the people, uh, people's uh, faces, and mm -hmm. for me, it's so uh, nerve, uh, like racking. Like so when I see people's faces, I get more stress. Mm -hmm. So I try just to the first thing I walk, I try to feel my feet. I don't see anybody. I put my scores in the in the stand. I I take a look. Uh, the pianist is by pianist, and then I, I don't look. I'm just looking, like the whole trying to imagine the sound, and you know, uh -huh. it's, it's like for me it works, but uh -huh. uh, every everyone is different. Yeah. Okay. Well, that leads us to a question we have from Oscar and Ernesto Velasco. He says, how much memorizing do you do on your performances? And can you describe your practice routines during performance season? Okay. So the last competition I did, it was Kobe. And I didn't, I didn't memorize the, the, the scores because I had to do recordings. So for me, recordings are, are really like special. Mm -hmm. So I need to be like concentrated in, in what I have to play. And, but for performance like uh, competitions, like everyone is watching you, you feel the energy from people. Then I play always by, by memory, everything by memory. Mm -hmm. And I started playing by memory because I use glasses. <laughs> So when I play with glasses, my glasses, I, I move around and my glasses did like this. They started falling down. So I ended up playing like this. And it was not possible. So one day I decided just to play by memory. And uh, at the beginning, it was really difficult, really difficult. I started like missing up, uh, like mixing stuff up. And maybe I was playing one sonata of Bach, but I started playing another one. <laughs> like the wrong thing and then I get mixed up I get mixed up but um, 
you will learn how to memorize things just by, by trying mm -hmm. and like uh, searching your own method that works for you mm -hmm. and uh, and really you have to try and to put like if you have a concert and you feel nervous to try to play by memory just play by memory and if you make mistakes it doesn't matter mm -hmm. just try to play and and play to your family play to your teacher by memory you arrive to your class and you say this day i will play by memory and sometimes my, my teacher took my stand even if i was not ready to play by memory they will say okay play by memory so I was forced uh, to play by memory, but it's really good for the future. You will, you will get like. And were you surprised when they took the stand away? How much you actually knew because you had practiced it so much that you could sort of get through it even without the music in front of you? Yeah, because sometimes we don't know, uh, like, what do we have in in, in our memory, mm -hmm. and when you are forced. To, to play by memory, you will say, oh my gosh, how did I know this? Like, oh, I know this passage. Because mm -hmm. uh, it, it's everything here. And even if you say, I oh, know I cannot play it. You have everything here in your head. And it will like surprise us, actually. Yeah. Wow. And about my kind of like uh, practicing, planning or schedule, I, I, when I have a competition or a concert, as when I was uh, 13 years old or 12 years old, I do uh, a planning like by myself, by hand, because I prefer, I prefer everything by hand. <laughs> so I, I get to see it in the, in the kitchen or in the mirror. And uh, I put the pieces that I need to play. I put my techni technical things that I have, uh, that I have to do and and i put everything organize everything and i do it every day mm -hmm. until maybe i i i do it one month before on of is or is if it's a, like a competition i will do it six months before and i will try to keep this planning up maybe if i if one day i don't want to practice i don't practice but uh, yeah it's important to important to be organized with your work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we have another question from uh, Dr. Franklin Inojosa, and he wants to know if Jose Gar Garcia was your teacher in Venezuela. Yeah, yeah, he was my teacher. He <laughs> was the one that uh, teach me how to be very organized. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, following up on your, your practice routines, you were mentioning that when you were 11 or something that you had Tafnel and Gobert and Moise on your, on your list. Do you have some other favorite um, technical studies that you go back to over and over? Or do you like to change things up? Yes, of course. I go to, to Peter Lucas Graf, maybe. And uh, also, I have some rubber dig, uh, some some kind of studies, and I mix it up. When I I don't want to do Tafanel or Moise, even though even though Moise have like many different things. So I spent twelve years. I have been doing the same things like uh, at least my like uh, warm up routine it's almost the same if i do it like uh, like always like usual so it i i, I like it like this <laughs> i don't know <laughs> um can you describe that warm up routine oh of course um when i was starting in studying in lyon in france it was like uh, maybe one hour or two hours of technique. I was like, uh, I, you know, it's, I was living in the conservatory. Uh, they have like uh, rooms there. And I have, I had like four friends from flute players, friends living there. So uh, we, we practice a lot, a lot, a lot. And, and 
I like to, to do a lot of technique because I think that I was I was not the best at, at technical stuff. So those years I practiced a lot of, of technical stuff. Mm -hmm. And now that I, I know what works for me and, and not, I have just half an hour of warm up. And uh, my teacher in Lyon, Philippe Bernal, he gave me this, this paper also, this piece of paper with the, the planning that I have to do. And I still have it here. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I start always with uh, some vocalists, like the singers do, mm -hmm. and and then I do the whole scales uh, from from Tafanel, mm -hmm. like, like pro. You know, every time that, that we play, we do our warm up. We have to ask ourselves: uh, You are doing this because it works and this does this for you and why are you doing this because sometimes we do warm-ups and we we do oh yes we, we, i'm gonna start with this but why do you need it to do what and that's a, a good question to mm -hmm. ask yourself and uh, i do the vocalist first because it's like you cannot start playing the flute and then try to do maybe only like uh, a long note or something because you are waking up and mm -hmm. your lips are not woke up so you you just play like a natural sound of the flute and then i do scales because i i want to wake up my fingers and my tongue and then harmonics because i want to be precise and then i do also some uh, melodic uh, melodic studies from from me mm -hmm. that has and that gives me like inspiration for the day mm -hmm. then i start to play my pieces and everything that i have to work on mm -hmm. okay um we have another question from mr velasco he wants to know what are the rodrigo etudes that you mentioned earlier are they transcriptions from guitar oh no 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 it was for flute and uh, no it was not rodrigo it was uh sorry it was uh lorenzo oh lorenzo okay Stadis. yeah yeah. Do you, has, huh? do you know the, what's the title of them? Do you know? Because he has like three methods that has studies. Mm -hmm. And then there is another one that has like uh, melodies and studies. I, I oh. don't remember. It's a, okay. it's a blue book. I remember that it's a blue book, but I don't okay. <laughs> I Lorenzo. Don't know. All right. I'll look it up. Thank you. Um, all right. I wonder if anybody else has any more questions. Um, if uh, there's anything else you'd like to ask uh, Ms. Blanco before we move on, we're, um, I'm just writing down Lorenzo studies. Um, we have a treat for everybody. We have a video. Um, I, I'm sure everybody's aware that Spain is six hours ahead of us. So now it is uh, 23 minutes till, um, till two, two in the morning. And she's traveling tomorrow, so we don't want to keep her up too late. And nobody performs at 1.30 in the morning. So we have a video of her. There is another question. Um, wondering if you are friends with Mr. Granados. Are you friends with Mr. Granados? You're not talking about Enrico, Enrique Granados. He died in, what, 1990 or something? Uh oh, Marco Granados. Marco Yes, I I know him. He I from Venezuela, of course. Oh yeah, yeah I know him. Okay, of course, because he's Venezuelan. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, anyway, is there anything else you'd like to tell us before we let you go to bed and get ready for your travels tomorrow? Um, yes, actually, um, like my thing to say today is just like try to. Hear flutes, but not only the flutes. Try to hear other instruments and get ideas from other people and not try to close your mind too much because it's important to be, uh, to have many ideas and, 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 
and interesting, interesting ones, not just like the normal ones. So you get that from other people, other musicians, other instruments. And I have been doing this like lately and it's, it's so refreshing. And I, I hear a lot of like uh, viola or, or, or violin or maybe horn and it's so interesting. So yeah, my, my, my thing today is just that people should try to do it too. It's so, it's so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to let you know that Sarah Jackson arrived a little while ago and she says, hi, Joydy, with about five exclamation points. <laughs> hi, Sarah. <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> I mean, I know her, but I have never. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Well, um, if, uh, if there are no more questions, then we are ready to move on to the video portion of the evening. But before we do that, I just want to thank you so much. Jody, for joining us and especially for staying up so late to talk to us. It's really interesting to hear a little bit about how you've gotten to where you are now. And I hope that people, you know, have taken some of your ideas and will, you know, make some use of them because uh, obviously what you've figured out for yourself is working for you. So it's just such a thrill to get to talk to you. And um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the piece we're going to hear? Because as we've observed, um, it's a piece that's not really that well known in the U.S. and not performed that often, but apparently it's fairly popular um, yeah, in I Europe. Can say that. Like, it's not really popular as uh, maybe another other sonatas, mm -hmm. but this one, uh, it I I had to play for. I will play it also in Japan next February, and uh, I it was like a a big present for me discovering this piece because it's like a um, German romantic period and it's so intense but at the same time beautiful it's like my boyfriend is a horn player and he always says that he said that it's almost like a horn sonata it could be perfect from the horn and it's so like big no, it's not used like we are not used as a flute player to to, to do this big sonata. Maybe Prokofiev, we, we could compare to to Prokofiev. Mm -hmm. but it's another language, and uh, it it has three movements, and uh, the first one we could compare to. Uh, yeah. I just want to say, not everybody knows what, what the piece is that they're going to hear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Fantasy Sonata, Opus 17 by Max Meyer Olbersleben, who lived from 1850 to 1927. Exactly. So, That's yeah. what I'm playing. And uh, it has three movements. And the second one, it's, it's a beautiful piece. And then the third one, it's like a Bacchanal. It uh -huh. says, yeah, that's the title. And um, it's, it's crazy. There are so many things and many, many notes, but also it has some types of, of, of melody mm -hmm. and slow melodies, and they are so beautiful. And I, I can say that this, this sonata was a big uh, uh, thing for me, and I will keep uh, on playing it because uh, it's, it's, it's so beautiful. Yeah. Uh -huh. Lovely. Well, um, I don't see any more questions. I just want to ask everybody to mute themselves if they're not muted. Um, and I guess uh, we'll uh, move on to watching your fabulous video. And um, it's just been a pleasure to talk to you. And we'll be, you know, following your your musical exploits quite closely now that we've had a chance to meet you. I'm now your Facebook friend and I'm following you on Instagram. So I'll look forward to hearing, uh, um, you know, hearing more about what you're up to. There are a lot of people saying gracias and thank you. Oh, and <laughs> so you, you might have a chance to look at the, the, the chat yourself and see the, the messages people are sending you. So. All right. Well, then um, I'm going to share my screen and um, we're going to watch your video and look forward to hearing this piece that many of us have not had a chance to hear. And okay. we wish you well, safe travels to France tomorrow. Okay, and uh, thank you so much. All right. Um, here comes the video, everybody.